Hello everyone! In the previous video, we created a script which generated a prediction of the locations and statuses of flights based on a provided schedule. In this video, let's add a map and visualize the flight movement. And we will do it through main four parts. First, we will set up a basic web server using the Express framework in Node.js. Then we will add a web page with a map and uh, at last we will glue those two things together with the code which we had in the past. For that we will need a basic web server and we are going to use Express in Node.js. Then we will need to have a web page with a map and I'm going to use Leaflet. And finally some minor tweaks to the code which we wrote last time so that we can use the object provided and then visualize the information which we were seeing in the terminal. So let's dive in. And let's start by creating a web server and I'm going to use Express for this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to use and quite simple, um, exactly what we need for our purposes. So let's go ahead and install uh, the Express. So uh, now we have a package JSON and you can see the dependencies over here. And let's add a new file which we will call server.js um, and over here uh, I would put all the logic related to the web server and then later we are going to reuse the information uh, about the uh, simulated flights from the run.js. Uh, but here in the server what we will need, of course, we need to include our express server. Uh, we will use require uh, for that and uh, it will be express. So next we will need to create an express application. So that would be const up uh, equal to express. And we will need to specify a port on which it will be run. So that will be a port and uh, let it be 3000 as the usual one. Next, we will be serving the static files from a folder public. So it will be pub use express uh, static uh, public and to start the server let's write up a listen uh, provides a port which we specified and the callback function where we can uh, also add the console log that the server is running and we can try it out by running node server.js server is running and then we can go to the local host 3000 and it says us cannot get which is kind of logical because we didn't add any endpoints there so and let's add an endpoint to get the aircraft positions so that will be up get uh, the endpoint name, which I would select, uh, is aircraft position positions. Uh, then we will have a callback with a request and response uh, values. And here we will uh, append to the response the JSON object with the positions of our airplanes. And to populate this value, we will need to make a couple of changes into the run.js script. So in the past, we were using the set interval function so that every second we were calling a simulate flights uh, method and we were repopulating the flight statuses um, array. And what I'm thinking is that actually we don't really neither need this interval anymore nor actually I want to have the simulate flights function because I want to have something instead of it. I would like to have a function which will be able to retrieve us at any given point of time uh, information about the flights in the air. Um, so let's create that one and see how it will work. So let's say const get flights uh, in uh, progress for a lack of better word and this will be a function and we are going to return here and let's look at our previous method 
So we are going to iterate again through all the flights and we are going to schedule that flight or kind of assume where it can be based on a given point of time. Um, but we are going to filter it as we did in the past uh, to have only flights whose status is in progress. So let me just uh, do it a separate line. So flight and the f uh, flight status is equal to in, uh, what did we have? In flight. In flight. So this should give us, so this method, every time we call it, should return us uh, the information about current flights or the flights which are in there. Let's try it out so that it really works. Console log uh, and let's uh, run uh, no, node run and it gave us some information so I think that seems to be working so let's use this function now we don't need it this bad habit of commenting out things just in case we will use it later uh, but some stuff I don't think we need okay but let's still leave the simulate flights so now this method I want to expose from this module so I would say module um exports exports I believe and then i will say this is a function which it exports and then we can include that function in our server.js how about we actually rename the run js to something a bit more meaningful flights js uh, whenever the web page is calling this endpoint we are going to retrieve the flights in progress from the uh, function get flights in progress or we just kind of like call them flights uh, and then we are going to return it as a part of the json response uh, so let me add this and now if we to the node server and I'm going to copy this endpoint and I'm going to run a local host uh, 3000 and then the name of the endpoint. Uh, and we are getting then the response with the information about the flight. So um, we do have, let's, let's pay attention to one of the flights. So let's say here we have the latitude and it uh, ends with 5872. Um, and then if I will refresh the page, then we see that latitude changed to 7989, uh, which means that every time we are making a request to the server, it returns us the current position of the flights. And uh, this flight's departure time, of course, doesn't change because the flight is still in progress. So all looks good uh, to me. Doesn't like, looks like a huge amount of flights, but perfect. So now what we can do is to add a web page and then from the web page we are going to call this aircraft positions uh, endpoint. So for that I will add uh, a file index.html. Um, yes, we are going to add it to the GitHub repository. By the way, the GitHub repository is in the description of the video. Uh, let me stop the server. And also I don't really want to write HTML code uh, and I'm terrible at writing HTML code. So let me copy past a placeholder which I already have. Uh, so I will add it here. So um, over here I have a placeholder uh, which I took for the leaflet um, for the leaflet map. I added some title and uh, we also already include some uh, leaflet GS page. If you're not familiar with leaflet map, leaflet map, yes, you can find more information uh, over here. Um, and this is uh, a very easy to use map, which I think fits for our needs. Um, so not sure how frequently it is used right now, but I used it in the past quite a lot. To populate this part, let's copy some more code. And on the leaflet page, uh, there is this uh, code which we can uh, try to use as well for our needs. So let's copy past it. Um, of course, it's not war, it will be const 
map and it will create the map and that will be some coordinates where it will start focusing on and this is 13 it will be a zoom level and to check that we have a map we can open our index html in the browser uh, in chrome so that leads us to the page uh, and what is interesting uh, it actually selected its own port but anyway we are in the city of london um, we are too much zoomed in. I don't think we need that. So how about we change the zoom level from 13? I don't know. Let's try 5. And let's see what actually 5 gives us name. Uh, how about we try something like 3? Okay, that's better, I guess. I think it's good. We can even make it less. Oops, that's too much. Um, okay, let's keep it like this. So what we need to do right now is to add the markers to the map so let's create markers array to be empty at the moment and we will need that later to be able to clean it up and do all the magic with it um actually it's not will be not const it will be let because we will be overwriting the markers because every for example, second or five seconds, we are going to make the request to the server to get the latest positions. And then we will override the current positions on the map. We will clean them all and put the new positions of those airplanes. Um, cool. Then we also will need to fetch information. So this is our web page. And now we need to fetch information from the server side where all the locations of the airplanes is calculated so for this let's create a function uh, and it we will call it fetch uh, airplane positions and that will be like this uh, and we will do the fetch and we know that um that the endpoint which we need to access is uh, HTTP localhost not really 8000 but 3000 and then we hit in the server let's copy it again because the typos are making my life miserable so we are fetching the data from this particular location and then once we have that we say okay then and we get the data so it's a promise and we are going to visualize uh, the data itself using the markers the information about the data object which we will get will be this uh, type of data so here you can see that we get an array and uh, each item of the array is uh, contains a flight so if i will search for the flight and I guess you don't really see so much because it's so, so tiny. But you can see that it's actually like we have multiple flight objects within that array. So we need to process uh, each of those objects and then to put location of that flight onto the map. So um, actually, it's like not really data. It's like let's do it flights. Uh, so that it's kind of describes that we have an array. And then for every flight, um, let's do for each, for each, um, and it will be the flight, and then we will process the information within some kind of a function. To add a marker, let's look how leaflet does it. So we have this uh, L marker with the location. I'm going to copy that L marker with the location. So here instead of um, the exact location we will have information from our flight and here we have the flight um, what did we have there let me check so we have the lat and long so we have ah, okay we have coordinates and then a uh, lat and long so let's do it coordinates lat oops and then the same for the long And we add it to the map uh, if we keep it like this how about we just go back to our aircraft positions and see if something really happened no nothing really happened because we are missing something 
And one of the things which are definitely we are missing is running our server. So it will be node server, server is running. And then if you go back to the map and it still doesn't show us anything, which is interesting, it doesn't really show us any errors as well, ah, of course, we are not really fetching our airplane position. So how about we just put it here and then yeah, okay, let's fetch them now. Uh, we will do it just once, which is totally fine. And this gives us at least some errors. So this is about the course policy and this is probably very, very expected. So no access control allow or region headers present in the requested source. So we are going to fix this by installing the course library in the server. So over here, actually wait, so I will stop it and we will need to do npm install course first. And then we are going to include course over here, const course, uh, require course, oops, here. And now we will need, I think it's just like this. Oh no, I'm wrong. It is app, oops, app use, and then we have course. This might be fixing our issues. So let's node server again. I refresh the page. Now we have a different error, which is a good sign, always a good sign. So type error flights for each is not a function. So you're saying that flights was not an array. Mm -hmm. uh, good. Let's check what flights are. So that's over here when I was saying, okay, to retrieve the aircraft positions. And I was very, very sure that this is an array. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do console look flights and see what actually Oh, this response, this is body. So then I guess if I put the body with a both stream, that's not what I wanted to have. I think I know what is happening here. So I'm missing here response handling. So it will be response. And uh, no, I don't want to import anything. And it will be response.json. And we're going to get the value from the response and that value will be the flights or at least that's what I'm thinking that it should work. Oh yeah, look, look at this. It started working. Uh, doesn't look very, very nice yet. We need to do several things. Uh, one is I want to replace that uh, default marker with something a bit prettier. And second one, we need to do the same stuff which we had in our run.js file where we are fetching the airplane positions on a regular interval. So that's the second part is easier. So let's do that. So instead of fetch airplane positions, we just set interval and we will say, okay, please run this function on an interval of one second. I mean, I guess you don't really want to run it on one second, but for our visualizations, uh, it looks nicer. So now if we go back, we can see a problem. So um, markers at this moment are only added to the map uh, versus what I think our idea is, is always to update the positions of the markers and not really add more markers so that it kind of like, if you zoom in, we can see uh, that this is the movement of the uh, airplane. And by the way, right now the map is so unresponsive just because we have so many objects on it. So um, let's fix that by using our markers array, which we created. So every time we are adding a marker to the map, I would like to add it as well to the markers array uh, so that uh, later when we have a new set of positions for the airplanes, we can go to the markers in this array and clean them up. Um, so that means that in the flights for each, this will be a new marker. Let's just call it marker, marker equal to our marker. And then um, we will do the markers push marker. 
Now, before we add all those markers to the map, we need to clean the previous markers. So for that, we will do the similar for each operation. And we will say for every marker on the map, uh, map dot remove to remove marker. Can we use all of this? Let's see. I am not exactly convinced that we have that function. That's <laughs> marker remove. Okay, I think what we want to use over here is remove layer with a marker remove layer let's try it out so uh, if we have these markers for each and then we add the markers over here so let me start again the server uh, and let's go and refresh and see yeah i think stuff is moving and and I'm not sure why exactly you're removing the layer, but again, I don't want to go into depth of uh, leaflet implementation. I trust that they uh, did it uh, very logically and very correctly. So um, we have the stuff moving around in, of course, the speed of a rocket because our airplanes are so, so fast. Now let's add a nicer marker uh, for our uh, airplanes. And nicer is very subjective. And also I didn't want to use some copyrighted image. So I ended up drawing my own airplane, uh, which looks pretty ugly. And maybe you would disagree on the word nicer, uh, but I mean, uh, feel free to use your own uh, image. So I'm going to add an airplane PNG uh, into the project and I'm going to add, and it looks like this. I mean, it's not exactly the ugliest airplane. Actually, I asked ChatGPT to draw me an airplane, and I believe it never really saw in real life an airplane. So I can conclude that my airplane is way better than whatever ChatGPT tried to draw me. Um, so uh, let's use this one, or please use your own. Um, and uh, we are going to add it uh, as an icon. So over here, um, whenever we are creating a marker, we are going to include the icon over there uh, in the code. And let's see if you have some documentation on that one. I want to have an icon. Uh, yes, this I think would do. So look at this. So we have icon and then we need to provide where it's located. Uh, the size, uh, the rest of that. Uh, so how about we just copy this part and uh, I will let me reformat this code so it looks nicer and it will be const my icon um, and my icon has a airplane, airplane PNG name, icon size um, icon size, let's do the 32 by 32. That uh, should be um, should be sufficient. I will use 16 and 16 over here. And um, <laughs> this is just the values which I played with. So um, we can try also something else, but I don't think we are really uh, need to be very picky here. So this should be enough. And then over here, when we add a marker, we need to say icon, my icon. Uh, that's, I think, yes, here it is. And then it's added to the map. We can replace, I think we should call it not my icon, but something like airplane icon. How about this? Airplane icon. And then we do the airplane icon and we add it to the map. Um, let's just restart it so that we have it from scratch and, and nothing happened. Very, very disappointing. So what do I miss over here? 
Okay, that was a bit stupid. Look at this. I put it next to latitude, longitude, and then this value. It should go outside of the coordinates of the marker. So let's see. This might work better. Yeah. Look at this beautiful airplanes. Oh, and the color. Do you appreciate the green color? Let's now add some pop-ups so I can click on the airplane and then I can kind of uh, see where it is flying from and where it is aiming to land at. For this, we will do marker bind pop-up bind. Uh, would be really nice to have some suggestions here. And in the bind pop-up, we are going to add information about the uh, flight. And then we have, we do have a flight number, right? So flight, ah, whatever. Let's put the departure airport, flight departure airport. <clears throat> uh, wait, will it work like this? Let's see. Is it expecting a string? It's like writing the code in blindness without checking the documentation. So departure airport, um, let's put the destination airport and let's see if that actually will work. Probably will not. If I click, oh, undefined, undefined. Almost, I think we are almost there. Um, but why actually undefined, undefined? Departure airport, flight, departure, airport, destination, airport, aircraft. It should be. Hmm. Let's just output this value. Well, this value totally worked, right? Probably I'm making some stupid typo somewhere. <laughs> yeah, the first one, I mean, also it disappears, but the first one works. So departure airport, destination airport. Where I'm making the mistake. Departure time, departure airport, destination airport, status, coordinates. Ah, okay, I got it. So, um, Let's say our architecture is not the strongest one. So I have in the response, uh, as a response, well, we, we call the object flight over here. In the response, I have information uh, about the flight itself, like the scheduled stuff. Then I have the status object, coordinates, and so on. So we need to get that departure airport from the flight property, which looks a bit ugly. I'm very sorry for that. Um, but I think it's fine. So, and now uh, if we click on it, it shows us uh, the airports. Let's arrange this a bit better. So we will call it departure airport. Um, we will do some kind of break over here and do the arrival airport. Um, and that might be enough. And now we can look at their airplanes. Oh my God, this kind of disappearing pop-up is really annoying. Um, let's try to prevent that. Let's, when we clean the markers, let's only clean if the pop-up is not opened. So... For each, instead of just removing it for every marker, let's verify. Hmm. Let's do that the marker get pop up. Let's see. Oh, God, it's over here. Get pop up. Return the bound from the pop up. Is pop up open? Ooh, interesting, interesting. I wonder if this will help us open the pop up, close pop up. Is pop up open? Uh, let's try it like this. So if mopper, uh, marker is pop-up open, uh, then we just return. Uh, if not, we remove that layer. Uh, let's see. Will this work or not? And, and it works. Look at this. I mean, we have the duplication stuff uh, because of this, uh, but at least we don't have that annoying uh, annoying uh, pop-up getting hidden all the time. Uh, what else we can add there to the information about their flight? Uh, we can add another brr and add information about maybe the flight number. Uh, so like flight, flight, 
uh, and flight number over here. Uh, then we have that. So in this way, we can observe and kind of make sure that the stuff is moving the right direction, or at least like that the tendency for all the airplanes not really move very, very chaotically around the map, but kind of have a targeted movement. Let's see where we are moving here. Arrival airport. Uh, let's check. What is this? Uh, international. Okay, that's not the airport. That's so difficult. Airport. It's Auckland's airport. Um, New Zealand. Okay, so it actually moves the correct direction. So towards the New Zealand. Cool. Um, we can also now speed up and slow down uh, the uh, flights. So if we go to our flight.js script, uh, we do have okay some certain things we don't need. Let's clean it now. Um, and and yeah, so we had the speed of the aircraft was calculated as a part of the travel time. So for example, if I will right now decrease it by uh, 10, uh, then our airplanes will start moving slower. Do I need to restart the server? Let me restart that. Oops. Oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so what I did, I decreased the speed of the airplane, uh, which means that airplanes will be longer in the air uh, for a given amount of time, because right now they are not really like flying. They are still flying very, very fast. They are flying faster than normal airplanes uh, in real life. Um, but we have more airplanes uh, simultaneously in the air in a given moment of time. And that brings to this ugly picture. So I think that ideally it should be that we kind of visualize maybe depending on the zoom level, the lower we get there, then we visualize all airplanes. And when we zoom out, maybe we hide or create the clusters. Uh, but I think for our goal, just having the airplanes and validating that they are moving uh, into the right direction is totally fine. So let's keep it like this and maybe I'll come back and use the 10,000 uh, meters per second. And maybe actually we can even uh, replace this with some variable. So here we can say airplane, uh, airplane, I did type on airplane speed. This will be our constant value. And then I will define it over here somewhere, const airplane speed, and it's 10,000 uh, meters per second. Great, so we have the map. Now my next step would be to bring the locations, the predicted locations of the airplanes, according to the schedule, into Apache Kafka topic, so that after that we can process it, data uh, using Apache Flink, for example, or doing something else, and maybe calculate such things as how many airplanes are currently in the air, um, how many airplanes uh, landed, and so on. So to do, or maybe to define some geographical uh, regions and also calculate how many airplanes, given a time window, were flying over that area. Uh, so that is the plan for the next video, at least the first step to bring it into Apache Kafka and you'll see how it goes after that. Thank you for watching.